Welcome back to part three of the Malisi Divided Tote. So in this part, what we will be doing is we will be attaching the upper lining to the bottom lining. You should have already interfaced the two top pieces which are made out of the external or cut out of the external fabric. You should also have cut your bottom lining piece. The bottom lining piece is made of waterproof canvas. So because we're using waterproof canvas, there is no need to put interfacing on this. It's stable enough for us to sew through. If you decide to make the bottom out of cotton instead of waterproof canvas, you will need to interface it. So the first thing we're going to do is mark the center point of our bottom lining piece. So to do that, you would fold it in half And I cut a little notch about one eighth of an inch, one eighth of an inch because it keeps it out of the seam allowance. And you can see there's like a little notch right there. And I actually do that on the top and the bottom. Our seam allowance will be a quarter of an inch, so that's why I do one eighth of an inch. So you're going to do that for both pieces, both the top and the bottom. Then what you're going to do is also mark the center of your top lining piece, folding it in half. And once again, cut a small notch, don't cut it too big out of the top. If you're uncomfortable with doing it this way, you may take a marking tool. So uh, erasable marker, or since it's on the back, as long as you've tested it and it doesn't bleed through, um, you can use a pen and you may want to just put a marking line right where the center is, or right where the fold is. So that's another way you can do it, to either draw the marking there or take the little snip. I take the snip and the reason I do that is because then I can see it on both the front and the back. So either way that works for you, just don't mark it on the front if it's not erasable. And even if it is, make sure you test it. Okay. So the next thing we're going to do after we've done that to both pieces, right? So we have two pieces for the top and two pieces for the bottom. We're going to mark the center line. We're then going to take our top piece, which has the interfacing, and we're going to lay it right side down on top of the right side of your lining. So I mentioned before that the lining has a weave to it and the back is smooth for waterproof canvas. So we're gonna lay them, and in this case, it doesn't matter because this is not directional fabric, but if you're using directional fabric, you, you'd wanna test it first by laying it on top of it in this way so that you can see it face up and face up. And then what you would do is you would flip it down that way you know when you unfold it, it's going to be, um, your directional fabric will be right side up. We're then gonna take some clips, and I always start at the center, and we're going to clip. Along the top. By the way, this would also be a good place if you wanted to and you had that one eighth inch tape that we that came in your box. Um, this would be a good place to apply. And this is the one eighth inch tape because it's so thin and I would seam allowance a quarter of an inch. This is a good place if you want to lay a piece of double sided tape on there and then you would not need the clips. So once again, it's right side up for the bottom and right side down for the top or wrong side up for the top. So you should see the interfacing. We're going to take this to our cutting mat and we will sew with a quarter of an inch seam allowance along the top edges of this to attach the top to the bottom and then we'll come back. You should be doing this step for both pieces. So you should be doing it for two pieces. So when we come back, we will have both pieces done. So you should have sewn with the quarter inch seam allowance along the top to attach the raw edges of your bottom to your top. And that should have been done for both pieces. Uh, 
And then what we're going to do now is we're going to take one of our pieces and we're going to push with the bottom facing towards you. We're going to push that top piece up and away from the bottom piece. And we're going to press it with our fingers. So the reason we're doing this is because we're, we're going to take this back to our sewing machine and we're going to sew along this edge on the actual exterior fabric. So we're not sewing underneath it, we're sewing on the edge. The reason that we're sewing on the edge is because what we want to do is we want to tack down or sew down this piece right here. So the seam allowance, you don't need to open it up. All you simply need to do is push it in an upward position away. If you would like to, you may lightly iron, so you can lightly iron this flat on the waterproof canvas on the front. Remember, never iron on the back of the waterproof canvas. You can lightly iron across that if you feel that you need to keep it flat. What we're going to do next is we're going to take a 1 8 seam allowance and we're going to stitch down along the exterior piece. When you stitch this down, you should be using a top stitch length of between a four and a five. So let's go to our sewing machine. So once you've top stitched, your piece should look like this. So you should see the top stitching on the exterior fabric. And then if I flip it over, you will see that I have And it's hard to see, but it's two rows. Oops. It's two rows. It's two rows of stitching. So it actually ended up for me being right on top of that other seam. Yours may be a little bit higher, but it should not be low. It's two rows of stitching. So it actually ended up for me being right on top of that other seam. Yours may be a little bit higher, but it should not be lower. So when you're done, you will have that on both pieces and you will have tacked down that back piece. So we're going to take these two pieces and we're going to put them to the side. The next piece that you're going to get is you're going to get your interior welt pocket. Now for the interior welt pocket, we're going to need to make several markings. So the first thing we want to do is I'm going to measure the center and I tend to do this all the time, whether I, d I use that marking or not. I mark all my centers. Once again, I take a little snip about one eighth of an inch. And I do it on the bottom as well. So we're going to flip it over to the reverse side and we're going to make two measurements. So lining my um, center mark along one of my vertical lines, I'm going to mark down two inches from the top raw edge. And I'm going to draw a line. These are on the back. I'm using a permanent, a permanent marking tool or pen just so that you can see it. You can use a wash away. Um, tool or an, era an air erasable one or an iron one if, you if you'd like, but um, I'm using this so that you can see it. Next, we're going to draw a line that's one and a half inches from the top. So we'll have two parallel lines that are a half an inch apart. The next thing we need to do is measure markings along the side. So we're going to measure a mark or a line or draw a line that's one inch from the left and one inch from the right. And one inch from the right. So now you will have four lines. You'll have two parallel uh, horizontal and two parallel vertical. We're now going to draw a line that's a half an inch from the left and a half an inch from the right. 
So you'll see where we're going with this in a minute. So we're going to do another line that's a half an inch. And a half an inch. We're going to line up our center. And if you look at your center mark, what you will find is that you will have a line. So this is my center point right here. And we're going to go one, two, three and a half. And the three and a half should get us where that half an inch line is. And if we go one, two, three and a half, it should get us where this other line is. So the pattern asks you to measure three and a half inches this way and three and a half inches that way so that we have about a seven inch opening. So that's going to be the size of our welt pocket. The next thing I want to do is using one of these horizontal lines, I want to measure either down or up one quarter of an inch. And the reason I say either down or up is because it's a half an inch. So what we're doing is we're finding our center line. So it really doesn't matter if you measure from the top or the bottom. We just need to find that, that quarter of an inch or that center line, which is a quarter of an inch. So now we have a series of lines. So this is what yours should look like. So one final step is to draw some, um, I, I call them greater than or less than signs. So where we have this half an inch marking on the vertical and we have that center line, we're going to start at the top and I'm on the right hand side. We're going to start at the top corner where the top corner meets. So that would be right over here. And I'm going to draw a diagonal line to meet that center line. And then where I stopped on the center line, I'm going to draw another diagonal line coming out this way. So coming towards the other corner. So that's why I get my little less than symbol. So I started up here, I drew a diagonal line to the center line. And then where the center line was, I drew a diagonal line back to that corner. So it should make this what looks like a less than sign. I'm going to do the same thing on the left hand side and when I do it over here it'll look like a greater than symbol. So there is a little bit of math here. We measured and we're using some symbols. Okay so now you should have those two markings this one and this one on either side. So now we're ready to start sewing this down. You'll retrieve your one of your interior lining pieces that you attach the top to. We will line this up along the center line. So wherever you mark that center line, we'll mark it up. And then we will mark this as well along that center line. So I have my notch here and I'm matching it with that. If you um, did like I did in the beginning and you notch the top and the bottom on the bottom half You will be able to see where the center line is and it'll help you match it So in this case, it's going to be kind of hard for me to um, Clip it and you can pin it. I find that waterproof canvas is a little challenging to pin through So what I'm going to do is on this pocket here because I know that I'm going to cut it open I'm going to use my one eighth of an inch tape. And by the way, this is removable. So if you put it on, you can always take it off. I'm going to fold this back, keeping an eye on where I am. So I just fold it back. I put my thumb on that center line and I kept it there and I just folded it back just like that. So that's the center line. I'm going to take a piece of one eighth inch tape and I'm just going to lay it over here and I'll be removing it but I'll also be cutting through it so we'll get it out of there okay so I put a piece of 1 8 inch tape right there just to hold it down for when I sew you can pin it if you want um, but once again it's hard to clip so you'd need to pin it 
outside, so either on the, the top, the bottom, the left and the right, just pin it outside of your sew area. Your sewing area is going to be along this center line. So that's why I put the tape there, but it doesn't matter because I'll be uh, removing the tape. So the next thing I'm going to do, so I've added that tape. I finger, I finger press it down with my nails to make sure it sticks. And then what I'm going to do is I'm gonna peel that backing off. So once I've peeled the backing off, it should look shiny. There should be a shiny um, film right here. I'm gonna center it again, just to make sure I have it. I'm going to take this and just place it there. And like I said, I just need to hold it temporarily. That's a temporary, it's not permanent, it's not gonna stick. I just need to hold it so that I can sew. I'm gonna be cutting, I'm sorry, I, I said earlier I'm gonna be sewing along this line. I'm gonna be cutting along this, this line. So my sew line, it, so once you have this down, you're ready to go to the sewing machine. We're going to sew two parallel lines. So we're gonna follow the top line of our rectangle and we're just gonna sew from one corner to the next corner, back stitching at the start and the stop. And then at the bottom line, we're gonna sew another line of stitching starting at the bottom corner, stitching straight across to the opposite corner and both lines will be stitched using a stitch length of three. We will not be sewing lines down the side. So we should only have two parallel lines. So let's take this to the sewing machine and sew those two lines. Next, what we're going to do is we're going to cut this open. So make sure you did not stitch on that center line. That's where I put the double-sided tape. So we're going to cut this open. The way that we cut it open is I'm going to fold it in half. And the first thing I'm going to do is take a snip in the middle. So the snip in the middle right here on the center line is what will help me get started to, to cutting this. I'm going to just cut and then what you'll notice is there's a little opening. It doesn't matter if it's not straight, just get as close as you can. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut along that center line. And I'm gonna cut along the center line until I get to that point. Don't cut beyond that point, just get to that point. Okay, so now I'm at that point. What I'm going to do next is I'm going to cut along this diagonal line. Now when you're cutting, you wanna stop just shy of that corner because you don't wanna cut through that stitch. So I'm going to rotate this slightly with my hand and I'm gonna take little cuts until I get to the corner, but I don't wanna cut into the corner and cut those threads. So I get as close as I can. All right, so now I cut that. I'm gonna get just a little bit closer. There we go. So I don't wanna cut the threads, I just wanna get as close as I can. We're going to do the same thing with the other leg over here. And we're gonna cut and get as close as you can without cutting through the corner or through the stitches. All right, so when you're done, it'll look like this. And I've only cut half. So I'm gonna rotate it and I'm going to do the other side the same way. So when you're done, what you will have is you will have a fully cut um, pocket and you will have these little sort of like triangle pieces on the end. I'm just going to reach in here and look for that double sided tape and I'm just going to pull it off. It, it doesn't really matter. You can leave it because it's going to go in the seam, but pull it off. It, it doesn't really matter. You can leave it because it's going to go in the seam, but I'm going to pull it off.
once again you can leave the tape if you want to but I just wanted to show you that if you pinned it this is how it will look so you will see um, a little piece or about a quarter of an inch of your exterior fabric and the waterproof canvas so now that we've cut the opening what we're going to do is I'm just going to finger press this up on the bottom finger press it down on the top and finger press it in on the sides and remember there's no stitching over here we're then going to take our weld pocket and we're going to slide it through the hole that we cut so we're going to slide it right through there so that the entire pocket is on the back side because we have to do the same for the top as well and then you'll see the entire pocket will be through the back the reason I didn't stitch down the sides is because I want to get a nice crisp corner over here and with the waterproof canvas sometimes it's very difficult to do that with cotton you can sew down the sides and um, you can get that crisp corner but with waterproof canvas because of the stiffness it can be challenging so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my pocket and I'm going to turn it to the front and I'm going to roll that lining to the back And I'm just going to flatten it out so that I can see. So now you can see that I've rolled that pocket piece. And this is my pocket piece, the bottom of it down here, to the back. I'm going to do the same with the top. And I'm going to do the same with the sides. So what I'm trying to do is tuck it under there. In such a way that I don't see that piece. And I actually use my fingernail. Um to just scrape along the edge. You can use, if you have a bone folder, um, these scissors are Kai scissors, so sometimes I'll take the metal piece and I'll just run it along there. But you just wanna tuck it in. When it comes to these corner pieces, you wanna poke them in, just like this, poke them in. And we're going to stitch on the back side. we're gonna stitch these little tabs down. So you wanna pull them as, as hard as you can, or not as hard as you can, but pull them in such a way that you can get that fabric to the back. So that will now be what my pocket looks like. If I flip it to the front, I can see that I have an opening. Once again, if you would like, once you have that in, you know, the way you like it, on the front side only, you can take your iron and you can gently or, or firmly press it, but make sure that it's on the waterproof canvas side and not on the plastic side. So you can iron that in such a way that you can now, it looks like this. So the next thing we wanna do is tack down these little corners that we have. So if I fold this back, you can see that I have these, these pieces here that are peaked. These are the pieces that I want to tack down. So that little piece there is what I wanna tack down. I'm going to tack it down about one eighth of an inch from where I can see the corners. So I'm going to tack it down about here. And I'm going to do that on both sides. So if you fold it down, you can stitch along there. We're going to use a stitch length of three to tack those down. So once you've tacked down those stitches, those um, pieces, it will look like this. So this is how it will look. And this is how it will look on the inside. So you will see it but you won't see it once I flip it over you won't see it so unless somebody's sticking their whole head through your pocket they won't see it so we've just tacked it down on both sides so I did it on that side and I, I did it on this side as well the next thing we're going to do is to cover this opening so it's a light security I call it light security because you can't directly stick your hand in you have to move the welt piece so what we're going to do is we're going to flip it over to the back and we're going to fold this piece up so that it covers that hole. So this is the top of the hole and this is the edge of the welt. I'm just gonna quickly turn it over so you can see what's happening. So when I create that welt pocket, I've now covered the hole. I can't stick my hand in here. I actually have to pull this to stick my hand to the back. So that's what I did. So you 
fold it up just so that the edge of the fold meet, meets that, um, that edge that we created right there. So we're just going to fold it up just like that. It should be about a half an inch. So the fold should be about a half an inch. So if I look at it, this is my fold line. And this is about a half an inch worth of fold. So if I fold it straight up and then I fold it down a half an inch, that should cover my pocket. Test it on the front before you do anything else. Just test it. Make sure that it is doing what you need it to do. And you can see it lightly. And of course, over time, you know, this will open or close. Um, but that's how we're going to create the welt pocket. It is covering that hole. It should be about a half an inch because that's the height of our pocket opening. Because it's waterproof canvas, it does have some give, so it may be a little bit wider. But if you test it out, you'll see it ends up being half an inch, three quarters of an inch, and it covers it. So what we're going to do is flip this back over to the back. I'm going to clip this on either side to make sure I don't lose my positioning. And I'm putting my clips wrong side up. And the reason I'm going to put them wrong side up is because when I sew it, I'm going to flip it like this and my clips will be right side up. So once I've done that and I have my positioning, I'm going to go back again and I'm going to sew along this line. So you can sew over this or you can sew a little bit after. But what we want to do is we want to lock down that welt pocket. So we're going to do it on the left. And then we're going to do the same thing over here on the right. So what we're trying to do is lock down the fold that I just created. So let's go to our sewing machine and using a stitch length of three, we're going to sew those two um, folds. So now I've sewn the two folds down. You can see that they're sewn. So that's what the sew line looks and you can see that it's sewn down on both sides. Now, some people may do the fold and then put a row of top stitching um, before they do this piece, but I like the unfinished, you know, just the open edge that way. We're not going to be top stitching around this in any way, but now that becomes your welt pocket. The next thing we're going to do is we're going to turn it over to the back and we're going to take our bottom piece of our welt pocket and match it to the top piece. So this is going to be a shallow pocket. We're creating this pocket for two purposes. So we're folding it directly in half. One reason we're creating it is because we're going to turn or we're going to turn our bag through the bottom of our bag and then we need to seal up that bottom. Um, so that's why we're creating it. It's meant to be, uh, we're going to leave it as, as wide open as we can. And in order to turn it, we're going to need to cut the bottom. But before we cut the bottom, what we're going to do is we're going to clip to match the tops. And then what we're going to do is we're going to cut that bottom open. Um, I do it this way because that way I don't have to measure two pieces of fabric to make this work. I only need to measure one piece of fabric and then I just cut it. So we're going to take this and we're going to stick our scissor in here and we're just going to pull down and hold the fabric, but pull down and cut across the bottom. So what we're going to do on the back side is once we've cut open this bottom piece, let's put our clips to the side and make sure that they're facing with the wrong side up because I'm going to stitch it so that I can stitch it this way. So I want the top of the clip and so it travels smoothly on the sewing machine. Before I do that, and this is, not, um, this is if you're sewing this and you, you're uncomfortable about this welt pocket getting in the way. Take your welt pocket, flip it over to the front, take your welt pocket, and just use a clip and clip it down. Because we're going to be sewing very close along the top of this pocket, and you don't want to catch your welt pocket in the top. So the first step that we're going to do is we're going to stitch... I'm just going to move my clip a little bit. We're going to stitch 
along this edge to lock down this piece. So I want to stitch so that this piece is very shallow at the top. If you're not comfortable doing that, then just close up the pocket normally, just stitch across the top. So it's up to you. If you're not comfortable stitching this down, then what I suggest that you do is that you stitch it, um, that you don't do that, but rather you just stitch the top opening closed. So I'm gonna stitch close to this. It's about an eighth of an inch or so away. I've moved my welt pocket out of the way. If it's easier, you can pin that welt pocket out of the way. If you're not worried about it, you don't have to do any of these. But what we want to do is stitch this so that when we're done, there's no big opening that I can stick my finger in up there. So that's the purpose of this. You don't have to do that. Um, I'm just trying to neaten up this pocket. Okay, so this is what I did. I just sewed, as I mentioned, along the top edge, about a quarter of an inch. You can pull this out of the way, this welt on the front, and you can hold it while you're stitching, or like I mentioned, you can clip it, and you may double clip it down this way if you want to keep it out of the way while you're stitching. But the whole purpose was just so that I cannot stick in here, I cannot stick my finger in there because I have not sewn the top. If it's easier for you, yes, you may sew along the top and then practice this technique on another bag or separately but it's just meant to bring it in at the top if you stitch along the top um i will be cutting this when i'm done do not cut it so if you stitch along the top do not cut it because it will create an opening in the top so now my welt pocket is almost done and the next thing i need to do is stitch the bottom so the bottom is going to be so i'm matching up those corners you can see my stitch line here And I'm going to clip this. I clip. I actually sew from the bottom side, but if you're sewing from the top side, um, you clip them with the clips in the right up position or upside down if you're going to sew. And I sew from this position, so I sew down this way and across. And that's because it's easier to move this out of the way if it's on top. If it's on bottom and you're sewing, you have to make sure that you push this out of the way and it's more difficult to try to maneuver that piece. So I stitch from the top. So I tend to clip it upside down when I clip my pieces. But that's just a preference. It you know, doesn't matter how you do it. Because I have, and I'm just gonna put a clip just at the bottom around where I wanna stop, stop and start. I recommend about, for this bag, I recommend about um, an inch or an inch and a half. It's up to you what you're comfortable with, but we're going to have to pull this lining through that opening. So try to leave, you know, maybe even a half an inch opening on the edge so that you can get as much of the, the lining through it. And we'll see what we do when we get to that. But when we create that internal zipper pocket, we're going to need to get that pocket through here to close it up. I have not stitched my top. If you decide to stitch your top, you're going to start and stop, start and stop at one corner. You're going to go to the, at one edge, long edge, you're going to go to the corner, pivot, come down the side, stitch across the top and stitch down and then pivot again and start and stop at your stop point. If you did like I did and sewed this edge, which is sewed this piece on, what you can do is you can start and stop at one position, go to the corner, pivot come to this line start and stop cut your thread and do the same thing on this side so you don't have to stitch across because you've sealed it up if you have not sealed it up and your top is open then you, what you're going to need to do is make sure make sure that you um go to the top and go across if it's open if it's not you just need to sew as far as that line that you stitch and start and stop your uh your stitches and then cut the thread so I'm gonna do that I'm gonna start at this line come down start and stop do the same thing come down start and stop like I mentioned I stitch from the front side of my material so I stitch with the front side up because then as I get to the pieces I can flip them out of the way as I sew but it's up to you so that's just the way that I sew it but there are options so let's take the sewing machine and close up that pocket so now we've sewn this pocket closed I've sewn a line going from one of my corners 
to the edge, mud on my long side, to the edge and up. And I've matched this line. So I started and stopped here, I backstitch. I did the same thing on this side and start and stop, came down, pivoted and uh, only sewed about an inch um, here to leave as big an opening as I can to be able to turn this bag. Um, the other thing I wanted to mention is for those of you who decided to not tack this down, right, not create that extra line of stitching and tack it down, but rather went to the top and sewed all, all the way around, that's totally fine. Um, you will have a gap up here, so if I turn the bag, uh, the lining over, at the top here there will be a gap that you can stick your hand in, but that's okay. I don't know how many times you're going to turn your bag upside down and do that, but I was just trying to show you a neater way to do it. So if you decided you wanted to not do that piece and just stitch the bag, that's totally fine. So the next thing that I'm going to do, because I do have this extra fabric, is I'm going to cut as close as I can, or I'm going to cut over here to about like a half an inch. Um, if you stitch the top, do not cut this because you will have another opening. So I'm just going to cut and I'm not measuring this, it's just going to be about a half an inch across just to get rid of that extra fabric. I don't need extra fabric in my bag. Okay, so that's all I'm doing. So when I have this, it is stitched. So now what I should have is I should have a pocket that has an opening in the back on the bottom. And when I stick my hand through, I should have that weld pocket on the other side. So this is what I should see when I'm done. So now what we're going to do is we're going to take this piece and put it with our other lining piece. And your other lining piece should not have a pocket on it, right? It should just be a plain lining piece. And we're going to put those to the side. So next what we're going to work on is our inter internal zippered pocket. The internal zipper pocket, we're going to need the exterior two pieces of that, which should be interfaced. And we will need two pieces of waterproof canvas, which are not interfaced. And we will need that zipper that we prepared earlier. So those are the pieces that we're going to need to do the internal uh, zipper divider pocket. So the first thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to find the center mark top and bottom of all of my pieces. So I'm just going to do what I've been doing all along is I've been folding it in half like this. I'm going to grab my scissors and I'm going to take a little about one eighth inch snip top and bottom. Always remember to realign your top and bottom when you do this. So every time I do this, I do the top and bottom. I always um, reset the bottom because Sometimes what you'll see is it ends up being skewed a little bit like this. And so I always reset it. You can do a mark on the top and bottom with a, a pen if you prefer to do that. Uh, like I mentioned earlier, I cannot see the mark and I, I have to fold it back and fold it like this. So that's why I take the snip. But be very careful with those snips because you don't, you want to make sure that you're not um, snipping too deeply where you end up having it show when you put the bag together, there's like a little opening because you snipped it too deeply. So about an eighth of an inch is usually enough to make sure that that gets done. So what we're going to do is we're going to also get our double-sided tape. And this is the double-sided tape. I'm using the one-eighth inch double-sided tape because when I attach my zipper, I'm going to use a one-quarter of an inch seam allowance. And by doing that um, and using the one-eighth, this will not be in my stitch line. So you're going to get your zipper and you're going to lay it on the cutting mat and I'm going to take my tape and I'm going to run it along the top edge of my zipper. So I'm going to do it the full length of the zipper. What I'll also do is if you look as I press it down, I'll just try to get as close to that edge as possible out of my stitch line. And because it's one eighth, even if it's a little bit off on the top, it's totally fine because you're not at a quarter of an inch, you have another eighth of an inch for it not to get into your stitch line. So once I do that and I neaten that up a little bit, what you will notice is where the zipper pull is, and this is a number five zipper. 
where the zipper pull is, you'll notice that you end up with a little bit of a, if you can see, a little bit of a rise right there. So what I do is once I've pushed it down over here, and I know that's against the edge, I will slide my zipper so that that little bump goes away, and then I will push it down the rest of the way. So we want to make sure that our zipper pull, and I'm going to turn this around. So I put it on the bottom, not the top, but um, I'm going to make sure that my zipper pull opens when we're, when we're done, that the zipper pull is going to open to the right and close to the left. All right. So for this purposes, I'm going to just put a piece on the top. No matter which way you lay, we'll talk about how to install it so it does that. But right now, we just put a piece of double-sided tape. The next thing I want to do is to make sure that my zipper is centered within my pocket lining or my pocket in general is I'm going to fold it in half. And this part I do use a pen on. Um, I don't like cutting it. I'm afraid that it'll unravel at some point, although some people say it won't unravel. But what I do is I fold it in half and I will make a mark on the wrong side of this. So I do it on that side and I do it on this side. And once again, make sure that you realign your ends here just to make sure that it is the center and you're not off center and i'll make another mark right here and this one's slightly off so i'll just do it again okay so once you've made that mark what we want to do is we want to line up these center marks with the center mark of our fabric and our waterproof canvas so the first thing we're going to do is we're going to lay our zipper right side up. Well, actually, let's lay our fabric piece right side up. We're then going to take our zipper that we added the tape to, and we're going to peel back that tape. So we're going to peel that back. Because I can see the center mark on the back, I know where the center is on my zipper, and I'm going to lay that center right against the center mark of my uh, fabric my i'm going to pull this out of the way just so that i can make sure that that's totally flat so i'm going to line that up there i'm then going to press down and this is a light hold with this tape slide your zipper pull out of the way so i'm going to slide i've pressed it already so i'm going to slide it back the other direction just like i said so i don't get a little bump I, that bump will not happen and i will attach this as well just like that. So what should happen is you should get a light hold so that you don't really need clips. If you feel comfortable, you may add clip, clips to this if it makes you feel more comfortable. We're going to stitch and we're going to base stitch this in at about uh, using a, the longest stitch length on your sewing machine. So my longest stitch length is a six. If yours is a nine or whatever, we're just basing it in and we can start here using an eighth of an inch seam allowance because we're just temporarily putting it in. I use an eighth of an inch because that way I don't have to pull out the basting stitch. Uh, some people baste it at the seam allowance and then you have to go back later and pull it out so you don't see it. In, in my case, I'm just going to baste it in. I'm not going to worry about pulling it out later. I'm just going to leave it. Okay, so we're going to go in and we're going to base stitch that in at an eighth of an inch seam allowance and then we're going to come back. Okay, so now I've tacked that in using a basting stitch. And what you can see is I started here. I just started a little bit off and I ended a little bit off. You don't have to stitch to the end. I use a stitch length of six, which was the longest on my machine. And you can see that it's tacked down. Next, what we're going to need to do is this is going to be the exterior, but we're going to need a lining piece on the back. So we're going to take our double-sided tape again, only because I, want, I don't want to have to add clips. You can add clips along the top. I'm going to put a piece of double-sided tape so that it runs the full length and you can just do it on the zipper if you want but i'll just do mine the full length if you want to just do it on the zipper that's fine because it will still hold it all right and then i'm going to peel that backing off like i did before so i peel the backing off to expose the double-sided tape I'm going to take my waterproof canvas and I cut that center notch at the top and the bottom and I'm going to put it right side down. Now remember I said waterproof canvas has a weave on one side and it's smooth on the other. 
So I'm going to turn it so it's right side against the right side of my fabric and centered. What's good about this is you just really need to match up the corners. And I'm going to press it down against that double-sided tape. So I'm just matching that up. And this is called a zipper sandwich because the zipper's in the middle. And so now I have the wrong side of my waterproof canvas and the wrong side of my um, fabric facing out. So if I flip it over, it's all the wrong side. All right. I should have my zipper. I'll try to do this with the wrong side of the zipper. So the right side of the zipper is facing down, which is what I should have done in the first step. So the first step, the right side of my zipper should be facing the right side of the fabric. So now we're going to permanently stitch this together. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take, um, go to my sewing machine, change my stitch length to a three, and then stitch at a quarter of an inch seam allowance straight across the entire top of this. So let's do that and come back. So we've stitched across the entire top from beginning to end, back stitch at the start and the start using a stitch length of three. And now we have the zipper attached to both the lining as well as the front. If I fold this over, and I'm just uh, pulling it down because normally we'd iron it, but I pull it down. You can see that the zipper is now centered within this pocket. We're going to top stitch down just on the front side. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to open this out so that it's flat. My zipper should also be flat against my lining piece. I'm going to either pull down and finger press, or you can actually iron this. You can take your iron and iron along that fold because the waterproof canvas is on the right side. So you, it's okay to warm that up a little bit, but I'm going to iron this flat. So make sure you tug it down and it's ironed flat. Once you've ironed that, this piece here, which is the lining piece, should be pointing down towards my exterior fabric. So that's really, I'm not doing it this way, I'm ironing it this way so that it's down. Make sure you iron from the front. We're going to use one eighth of an inch seam allowance on the exterior fabric with a stitch length of four because it is a top stitch. So one eighth of an inch from this edge down on the exterior fabric with a stitch length of four. So let's go to the sewing machine. So now I have that top stitching done. On here. And the reason that I did the top stitching and I pulled this out of the way is because when I fold this down, you will not see top stitching on the inside. We'll just finger press that. But as a new sewer, beginner, beginner sewer, there's nothing worse than trying your hand at top stitching and then you open your zero, zipper and in here it's not straight. So to give it a neat interior, because nobody really looks at this, um, you know, on the outside, um, to give it a neat interior so when you look in there, you don't see that top stitching, I opened it up this way. Had you stitch it, if it's not wonky or not straight, that's fine. But if they open it up, or somebody opens it and sees the wonkier on the inside, it, I know it can be frustrating and I don't want to frustrate you guys. So we're going to take these same steps for our other side. Okay, so we've completed sewing both sides of the pocket. I've folded this, the second side of the pocket out of the way and I've top stitched along this edge. So now when I pick up my pocket, I can see that I have a full pocket. I'm just gonna finger press this, I, this down so just going to push down with my hand just to get this flat but you can see that you have the lining you have the exterior and you have the zipper in the middle 
So if I line up these edges, and I'm just going to temporarily line them up right here, and add a clip, and I do the same on this side. And I add another clip. I'm just pressing hard and folding that zipper up. So I'm just folding it up. What I can see is if I open it up, I have an internal pocket. So I have an external exterior piece and I have an interior piece. And my zipper is on the top. So what we're going to do is we're going to actually cut this a little bit for when we put it in the bag. So I'm lining up my edges, my side edges here on both sides. And what's important is that you line up the top and then you line up the bottom and then you get everything in between. So then you just clip along the, in the inside. So we're going to do a, a basting stitch on this because um, what I want to do is be able to cut it and I want to make sure that I'm cutting it straight. So I'm going to do a basting stitch on this and I'm going to just push that down a little bit. And we're going to do a basting stitch on both edges. So we're going to do it on this edge. And if you need to clip the bottom, you know, um, if it makes it easier and we're going to do it on the other edge. So I clip the bottom as well, and then I tug a little bit just to get it to be straight. Just like that. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to stitch a quarter of an inch, I'm sorry, an eighth of an inch seam allowance with a basting stitch. So mine is a stitch length of six because that's the biggest stitch on my machine. And then we're going to come back and we're going to do some measurements and we're going to do some cutting. So now that we've basted the sides, we need to do a measurement. So I'm going to measure in one half an inch from both edges. So one half an inch from both edges. Make sure that you're laying this flat when you're measuring it, just to uh, so that you're not getting a, a wonky edge there. So this should be totally flat, and we're going to measure over one half an inch. And we're just going to make a mark at a half an inch. So your edge here should be straight and you're going to make a half an inch mark along the top. So it should be the top where the zipper is, not the bottom. So you just need to make a mark and I'm going to use this chalk liner so you can see. So we're going to do that on both sides. And you should close your zipper because it will make it easier to do this if your zipper is closed. If you find that you want to op open it, you can. I'm sorry. I didn't need to go all the way down. I just needed to go a little more. It doesn't matter. It's a truck liner, so it'll, it'll get removed. So after you've made that half an inch mark at the top, you're going to take your ruler and you're going to match up where that half an inch mark is at the top. And at the bottom, you're going to go down to your corner, your exact corner down here, and you're going to draw a line. And that's going to be a line that we're going to cut on. So that's going to be our cutting line. So we're going to cut this pocket at a slight angle. So we're going to angle it from the bottom towards the top, and that's why we put that half an inch mark. So you're going to either take your scissor or your rotary cutter, and you're going to cut on that line. I'm going to use a rotary cutter to do this. So I'm measured over a half an inch at the top. That's where my ruler is. It's a half an inch up on the top. And I'm matching the corner, the exact corner at the bottom. And it should be an angle that I'm cutting along. I'm then going to take my rotary cutter. You can do this with a scissor as well. And I'm going to cut off that piece. So when I'm done, I should have an angular piece to my pocket. So you can see now my pocket, when I match it up, line up on the bottom, it, it veers off. There's an angle. All right. And it should match a half an inch mark on there. 
I'm going to do the same thing with the opposite side as well. So I drew my half an inch mark. I'm going to line that half an inch mark with my ruler. I'm going to put it at the top. I'm then going to turn my ruler in to get the bottom. The bottom corner. You're going to draw a line. So I drew a line going this way. So it's at an angle. And then you're going to take your ruler or your scissors or your rotary cutter. And I'm going to use my rotary cutter in this case. And I'm going to cut an angular line, making sure that I'm starting at the half an inch and I'm stopping at my corner. You can do it the other way around too if you want. You can start at the corner and go up. So when you're done, you should have two scrap pieces of fabric. We don't need to save these, so we can throw those away. And you should have a piece that's cut at an angle. So I'll turn it over so you can see, and it's cut at an angle. So you can see that there's a half an inch um, cut off. They're not, it's not even on here. Do not, do not sew the bottom of, your, of this pocket. The reason that you don't sew it is because we will be turning it through this pocket opening. And if you sew the bottom of the pocket, you won't have a way to, to um, sew it. At this time, open your zipper, so your zipper should be open, and you should be able to take your hand and reach it straight through your zipper. Okay. Next, what we're going to do is we're going to go back again, and we're going to base stitch both sides. So I cut off the stitching, but the reason I had you base stitch it was to make sure that it was totally flat when you were stitching and cutting. So we ended up cutting off all if not most of it and I just want to make sure that I base stitch it again so a stitch length of six on my machine whatever your longest base stitching stitch is on your machine and you're just going to use an eighth of an inch seam allowance because we just want to make sure those seams uh, those sides match when we put it in the bag it just makes it easier so let's go to the sewing machine and base stitch down the sides so I've base stitched the sides so it's act so they're not open on both sides. And next what we're going to do is we're going to attach our pocket to our lining pieces. So first I'm gonna get my lining piece with my welt pocket. And what we need to do is we need to cut out in the bottom corner a two inch box. So it's a two inch by two inch box at the bottom. So I'm going to flip it over to the back so you can see it, and I'll draw the box for you. So we're going to take our ruler and take a marking tool of some sort, and we're going to do a 2 inch by 2 inch box at the bottom. Now we haven't done anything with this as far as angular cutting it in any way. Um, we're just, you know, it's regular dimensions according to the pattern. So we're gonna cut a box here that's two inches by two inches. So this is going to be, and I'm using a permanent pen so you guys can see what I'm doing, but I am using that permanent pen on the wrong side of the fabric. So I'm gonna do the same thing on this side. And remember, measure once, measure twice, cut once. So I'm getting a two inch by two inch. So I have two boxes. And then you would do the same thing. for your other lining piece. So both corners should have a two inch box cut out of the bottom.
So I know some people who use um, the rotary cutter to do this. I use a pair of scissors. Scissors. So I'm going to cut this out. So once you have those corners cut out, we want to add now the divider pocket. So let's put the part, the lining that does not have the welt pocket to the side. So this is our welt pocket. Once again, re reminder that your welt pocket should have an opening so that you can stick your hand straight through. If it doesn't, you can go back and fix that. But it should have an opening going straight through. We've cut out our corners. So I'm just double checking. And next what we're going to do is we're going to take that pocket, that divider pocket that we, that we just sewed, and we're going to add it to this. With your zipper pull um, all the way to your right. So we're going to put it to the right. So your zipper should be opening to the right and closing to the left. I'm going to add a another notch at the bottom here, the same way I did on here, for that, um, to match up this corner. So what I'm going to do, and I'm just click, uh, clipping, I'm not gonna sew this, I just wanna clip the center to make sure I get it even, is I need to cut a two inch notch. Now I, um, I mean a half an inch. So now it'll be a half an inch this way and a half an inch down. So I need to cut one half an inch notch at the bottom. And I have to draw this on the front. And I'm gonna do the same thing on the opposite corner as well. I'm gonna draw a half an inch and a half an inch. So it's a half an inch over and a half an inch up. So I'm drawing a line and a box. And then I will be cutting that out, that half an inch out. So I'm just gonna, I'm just pulling this down to make sure that I get it correct. Yes, it's a small um, a cutout, but I'm trying to keep as much bulk out of my corner seams on this as possible, which is why I made it smaller. Okay, so we have two little nicks at the corners. What I'm going to do is I'm going to take this corner, the top piece right here, that corner, and I'm gonna match it against the top corner, uh, sorry, the bottom corner of my piece. So you'll see that there's sort of a cutout here and there's a cutout here, that is correct. 
So I'm going to clip this right down here in the corner, like so. So there's a clip down there. I'm then going to take my pocket piece and I will be pivoting it in such a way that the side, the side matches, so that there is a side over here that matches up. So because it was cut at an angle, you will need to rotate it. And if you look at your piece, it will look like your piece is sort of skewed up to the top. That is correct. We're going to stitch down here using that same 1 8 of an inch seam allowance and a basting stitch to lock that in. And then what we're going to do is we will do the same thing on this side. So we'll take this corner piece and we will match it to this corner piece. All right, so we'll match those two corners and we will clip it in place to hold it. We will then match this edge so that it's totally straight. And it should line up about right underneath this piece here. So if you did it, you know that you're kind of getting it right if it, if it lines up, if it's a little lower, a little higher, um, but it should line up right there where this piece actually lines up under there. And we're going to clip that in place. So if you look at your piece, it looks like it's kind of like buckled here. That's how it should look and that's how it will look once we stitch this in place. So we're going to stitch both edges using a quarter of an inch, uh, sorry, using an eighth of an inch seam allowance, a stitch length of whatever the basing stitch is. Mine happens to be a six. And I'm going to do that to both edges. All right. And like I said, You'll see that it's a little buckled. That's right. That's the right way because when we put this in the bag, we want the pocket to actually pull in the bag sides in such a way. And then the zipper pocket is doing that. So that's why we cut an angle. All right. So let's do those basting stitches. So now once you've basted those in, what you will see is you will have, uh, like I mentioned before, it will look kind of a little bit crazy because this is pulling in and it, it kind of makes no sense at this point. But that's totally fine. Once again, your bottom should be open and your zipper should be open. We will be turning through that bottom. So now that we've stitched this in, we're going to need to do the same thing for the other side, and that's the side without the welt pocket. So we're gonna retrieve the side without the welt pocket. We're going to lay it right side up on our cutting mat, and we're going to lay the part that we just stitched the pocket to right side down. Now it should be easier to match these edges so you don't have to worry about this, um, this piece under here because we've already attached it. So what we're going to do is we're going to just make sure we attach or we line up this, line, this um, lining top with the lining top. So we should be able to see that and get that together and line that up. And we're going to add a clip. The basting stitches, like I mentioned, should help so that we don't have that fiddly uh, pocket on the inside. It actually is very easy. All right, and then we're going to do the same thing to the opposite side like we did before. And we just line up, you know, our corner pieces here. And yes, we can see extra fabric. We're going to talk about that in a minute. But we just want to line this up. Line up your top edge here with your top edge here. And that should be where your pocket is. And if you need to, you can tug a little bit just to flatten it out. So I'm going to do some double checking here. I'm going to check that my pocket is open. My welt pocket, I can see down to the cutting board. And this I can see down to the cutting board. That's correct. My welt pocket should be on the back. My zipper pull should be all the way to the right. 
So if it's to the left, that's okay. You can still sew your bag together, but this is the way that I'm doing it. If you want it to be like this, where it opens to the right, then you'd need to take out this again. Um, but it should be fine if you follow the directions. And what we're going to do now is we're going to put the final stitch in quarter of an inch seam allowance down both, si both sides using a stitch length of three. So we're gonna permanently attach this. All right, with a stitch length of three. And yes, we will have some overage over here and that's totally fine. We're gonna come back and address that. So now we've permanently attached the edges and the pocket is in there. The next thing we want to do is finish off the bottoms, uh, the bottom of the bag and um, part of the pocket. So what we need to do is match our center mark that we put on the bottom with our center marks that we put on our pocket lining pieces earlier on. So I'm just going to clip this in place. I'm going to do the same thing with the center mark of the pocket. So it's the pocket exterior and lining with the center mark of my lining bottom. So lining up the centers will make this easier to match. Then what I'm going to do is I'm going to take, I've lined up the centers, I'm going to take my piece that I cut and my corner piece that I cut for, my piece that I cut for my um, pocket, my corner piece, and the edge of the corner piece that I cut for the lining. And I'm going to match those. So it's normally easier to just match the corners at the center and the, the center first and then work your way out to the corners. So just make sure all of those pieces match. So you may have to like fiddle with it a little bit, but they should match. Okay. Give a slight tug just to make sure everything's lying nice and flat. And I've done that to one side. So you can see that. Then I'm going to turn it around and do the same thing to the other side. So I need to mark, match the corner piece to the corner piece. And the corner piece to the corner piece over here. And then like I said, you may want to give it a, a slight tug or pull just to get everything to line up. So what we're going to do is we're going to sew this bottom, but we're not going to sew the bottom. We're not going to sew this entirely closed because we're going to go in here and pull it out and sew it later. But what we want to do is we want to make sure that the bottom piece here is closed. So I'm going to seal it up and I'm going to leave an opening on the bottom according to the dimensions on the pattern. So now that I have the front part and the back part together, I can then start realigning my clips and lining them up so that they match. So we have, you know, at least like six layers of fabric in here, but it was easier to just do it separately and then put it together. So there's like about six layers. So there should be three on the front, three on the back, making sure that everything aligns. I'm just now going to go back in and add some extra clips to make sure I get them all together. So this is pretty thick. I will match up the centers just to hold it, but like I said, we're not going to be sewing this whole pop, this whole bottom closed. We're only going to be sewing it partway closed because we're going to need to use it to um, we're going to need to turn our bag through this opening on the bottom. So the next step after I've done this is I'm going to sew. Make sure that you have this lining. Uh, exterior lining interior and of your pocket and the lining main bag piece all lined up so you should be when you're sewing you should be catching six pieces of material you don't want to leave anything anything behind okay so it will be six pieces of material so we're going to take this back to the sewing machine and we will be sewing across the bottom using um, the instructions in the pattern as to how big to leave that opening. So I'm going to be sewing. I will be leaving an opening in the middle and I should be able to stick my hand straight through. So we'll double check that when I'm done. 
So let's go in the sewing machine with this and sew this with a stitch length of three and a quarter of an inch seam allowance. So now that we've stitched the bottom and we, we leave an opening here, we're gonna double check. So we're gonna reach our hand into the pocket lining. So the pocket lining, not the pocket exterior. And your hand should come out. So there should be an opening. We're going to double check that the opening for the welt pocket, we've also cut an opening in here as well. The next step for us to do is to close up our corners of our bag. So we're going to take our corner piece, stick your hand in your pocket lining so that you get to the corner, and you will see that there's a little tiny corner here. I don't know if you can see that right there. Right here, where my, there's a piece right here. So that's for the pocket um, that's inside. We wanna first pull that flat. So we should be pulling it like we would pull another corner. So we're pulling it so it's flat. We're pulling it left and right. We're going to clip that because that's going to be the center. So when you clip the center, just push your line, your um, seam left and right. So don't try to, you know, do anything fancy with it by opening it up or anything. It's going to be kind of hard. But just push one to the left, one to the left, and one to the right, and then clip it. That'll be our center. We're then going to take our lining piece, which is a waterproof canvas piece, and we're going to line up our little cutout there and pull so that you can get it as flat as possible. So it should be a straight line when you're done. And so then now we have that straight line piece. So now that piece, we're going to sew across to close up that bottom of both our pocket and of our lining piece. And it will be stitched using a stitch length of three and a seam allowance of a quarter of an inch. We'll do this to both corners of our bag. So once you've sewn the corners, so this is one corner, this is another corner. You should have a major opening in there so you can stick your hand through. Once again, double check this. So I can't um, repeat often enough, make sure those openings are there because we're going to need to pull them out of our bag. So now you've completed the lining with the zip pocket. You can see how the lining kind of pulls in your sides and that's intentional because we want the zippered pocket to pull in the side and give our bag some shape. I promise you we're in the home stretch now. So what we're going to do is we're going to now put this all together. So to put the bag together, we're going to need two pieces, right? We're going to need our lining completed piece and we're going to need the piece that we completed for the exterior on the, on the first video. So your exterior piece should have your straps attached, totally interfaced with both the foam and the woven fix which we used or whatever um, woven interfacing you choose. And then of course there's a piece of Decoville Heavy on the bottom. You should have also attached your purse feet if you wanted to. So purse feet are optional. They don't need to be on there. They're just, you know, very pretty and, and I think they make the bag look polished. And then any tag. So that will be your exterior. Your lining piece, your pocket, which is open, your welt pocket on the back wall, which is also open on the bottom. And we now need to put these together. So the question is, how do we do that? So what we're going to do is we're going to take our pieces and we need to turn them wrong side out. So the first thing that we'll do is we will take our exterior piece and if you just stick your hand in, in one end or one corner, you can poke it in and we need to turn this wrong side out. So you should have the wrong side of the bag facing out for this part. So once you have that bag facing wrong side out, you want to make sure that if you have a label or a tag, so this is the label or the tag, that that label or tag is facing you. So turn it around so that the label and the, ta and the tag is facing you. You then want to take your straps and fold them into your bag. So we don't want the straps outside the bag, we want them folded in. We're next going to take our lining piece that we created 
And this, because it has a center pocket, will be difficult to do. So what we're going to do is we're not going to turn the whole bag inside out. We're just going to turn it out enough that we can sew around the sides. So to make that happen, I'm going to take one side, just like this, and try to turn one side of the bag out. So you're not trying to turn the whole bag out. You just want to turn a piece of it out so that we can shove it in. So if you do that, you should then be able to flip up that piece of the lining. All right, so you can't turn the whole thing out. You can, but I wouldn't advise it. You just need to get this piece to stick up. Take your piece for the exterior. Remember the tag is facing you and my tag is under here. And I'm gonna drop this in just like this. So it's not totally inside out my lining. It's just enough that I can grab this piece. I'm going to line up my center marks for my top lining and my center mark for my exterior. And I'm gonna just start clipping around. So I clip the center front, I clip the sides, and you don't have to, you can open the seam if you want. Um, it is quite a small seam, so I normally just push one to the left and one to the right. So I push the seams one to the left, one to the right. So I match up centers and sides, and then I come back and I do the other pieces. So once again, just you know, push down as you need to. And usually if you do it, the centers then, um, and that's why the centers are so important that you mark those centers. So then you don't get a bag that's kind of wonky. And then the next thing that I will do is I will slightly tug on this and I will clip, put a clip in my straps. And I just do that to make sure that they're straight when I sew them. So I just put a clip right there on each strap. So if you have anything sticking up, strap connectors or anything like that on any of your bags, I normally clip those next. And then I will go back in and I will clip, you know, add as many clips as I need to the rest of the bag. So you can see that I'll keep pushing it down. That's totally fine. Um, if you pull between clip and clip, it'll flatten that out, that lining piece out so that it's easier to clip. And it looks like a hot mess, but I promise you it works. So then we have this, but I see that I have some gappy pieces. So what I'm gonna do now is just go back and add some extra clips to make sure everything is nice and, and clipped for me when I sew it. Okay, so now the piece is all clipped together along the top. Once again, remember, you don't have to push this all the way in because it won't go in and you'll be frustrated. You just need to grab, be able to grab that and clip around. I'm going to stitch this now along the top edge using a stitch length of three and um, a seam allowance of a quarter of an inch. We're now closing up the bag, so it becomes very important that you left those openings in the bag because we will be using those openings to turn the bag right side out. So let's go to the sewing machine and sew up the top of our bag. So we're almost there, guys. We're almost there. Um, so we're going to turn this bag inside out. And then we're going to close it up. 
So in turning the bag inside out, I wanted to give you the biggest opening possible. So that's why I left the pocket open. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to pull, it's like popcorn, Jiffy Pop popcorn, right? Um, we're gonna pull this lining up and out so it'll be totally flat. The next thing we're going to do is we're going to reach into that lining pocket, so that zippered pocket. So that's why it was important that you leave a big enough opening and you unzip your zipper. When turning bags out, do not pull it by the strap. Reach down to the, a corner, any corner, and poke the corner upward. So I poke both of my corners upward. I grab it with my hand on the inside and then I pull. You're trying really not to get that much fabric to come out, but make sure that it comes out gradually. Um, pulling by the straps also can cause you to pull your, dislodge your straps. So we don't want to do that. So I'm pulling the bag down as I'm pulling this up. So you can see I now have piece of the bag. I'm going to continue to fold that bottom piece or that bottom of my bag up, fold it up into the bag and continue to pull. So I left a very wide opening here very very wide and for those of you who don't know and have never made a bag this is known as birthing a bag because you're trying to fit something very large through something relatively small so take your time with this um, try not to tug too hard where you dislodge stitches but rather slowly turn and push the other part of the bag out of the way. That's all I'm doing is I'm turning and pushing or pulling the bag out of the way. And you can see that bag is, that lining is coming out. I'm sorry, that exterior piece is coming out. So I'm gonna to continue to do this until I have the entire bag turned right side out. And just push that pocket all the way in, all the way into the bottom. And you can do it. And then just pull, pull down on that pocket lining um, that you have in there and push your bag down. So now you can see why it was important that I had that lining open. And, and yes, you do have a big gap. We're gonna talk about how we close that. So you can poke down the sides of your bag like this and make sure it's down in there. I'm going to roll the top with my handle. I'm going to use my um, welt pocket, all that good stuff. And I'm going to poke back out my corners. So poke the corner exterior, pull this down, get your welt pocket, you know, relatively straight in there. Okay. Now you can see, kind of have a bag, right? Um, you can see we have all the pieces. You can see how the sides get pulled in by this internal pocket. What we're going to do is we're going to roll the lining top down towards the inside of the lining. And we're going to clip in preparation of top stitching so we can prepare to top stitch this. So we're going to roll it. Now, if you want to roll it, start from the side like we did before. Um, you can start from the side, clip that. The slides, the sides will be thicker, so take your time. With the straps, you should have a little piece in here. So that little piece of strap that's in there will help you so it doesn't you know, get this large easily. If you put it right to the edge, it can happen. Make sure when you roll your straps down and I advise you put two clips on this, that it's straight. So I advise that you put two clips. You put one on one side of your strap and one on the other side of your strap. So I you do that all the way around. So go all the way around, roll this lining piece in towards the inside of your bag to get ready to top stitch. All right, so we're going to do that all the way around. So do that and come back. 
So now that we have the lining together, we're going to attach the lining to the exterior part that we created in part one. So your exterior piece should have your straps attached. So it should have both straps attached to your bag. It should have your label. It should be fully interfaced. And if you wanted to, you attach some purse feet. And the purse feet, the purpose is to keep it off of a, a dirty surface or off of the ground. These are optional, but we did do it and it is part of the pattern um, if you purchase the pattern. So the next thing we're going to do is turn this exterior piece wrong side out. So when you're doing this, all your pieces should be wrong side out. So you're going to go to any corner of your bag and I'm going to this corner. I'm going to poke in the corner, which is the easiest way to do it. Poke in the opposite corner, grab that and then just pull. So we're just going to pull it and turn it wrong side out. So you're not going to put to the, your bag together right side out. You're going to put together wrong side out. So once you have that wrong side out, the next thing we're going to do is we're going to need to add our lining piece in here as well. But before we do that, we're going to flip our straps to the inside of the bag so they should not be outside. You're going to make sure that your label, and that was my handcrafted label and that was the duct tape piece that I added to it, is facing you. So when we put it together, this should be facing you. You're going to grab the finished lining piece that you did, or the semi-finished, because we still have some holes to, to sew up. And you're not going to be able to turn this completely right side out, wrong side out. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to try to turn one side of it, either the front or the back. I reach down, I grab that corner again, and I pull it. And I'm not trying to pull it to get it completely turned wrong side out like I did for the exterior. I just need the top piece, this top band, to be outside. So I'm going to push it in. And it'll be a little crumbled, so it'll look crumbled when you, when you start out, but that's fine. But we don't need it turned completely wrong side out, right? All we simply need is we need this band piece to be facing us. So as long as you have that, that's all that we need, right? So it's not completely wrong side out. Make sure that your welt pocket, and this is my welt pocket, is in the back of your bag because a welt pocket is meant to go to the back side of the bag, not the front. Um, just a, something about pockets. When you put pockets into bags, if you add something to that pocket, it weighs, it weighs it down. So by putting pockets that are on the lining side of your bag towards you, if you're only putting it one, it helps to put the, push the weight towards your body. Other than that, your bag will pull forward from the weight, and that's why um, we put it on the back side of, the, of, the, of bags. But, you know, if you put a double pocket, it evenly distributes the weight and so on. But anyway, um, take your piece, once again, tag in the front. You're going to slide in your lining piece. Both of these are wrong side, right? So it's, I'm seeing the wrong side of both of these. Your welt pocket should be to the back. So it's the opposite side of the tag. And what I do is I line up the sides first. So I'm going to line up the sides. I'm going to add some clips. Then I'm going to line up those center marks that I made. This is where center marks become very important. So, um, you know, and that's so that your bag doesn't come out skewed. Because if you, you know, if it's off center, then one side is leaning one way. And when you look at it, it looks lopsided. So by the, putting those center marks, it actually helps. So I'm going to line up the center mark. And once again, that pocket should be on the back. If you want it on the front, you can put it on the front. There's no, you know, it's whatever your preference is. It's just a suggestion. And then what I'm going, the next thing I do is if I have straps or any type of um, strap connectors, I line those up next. So I make sure that I put a clip on either, you know, either on either side to make sure it's straight when I sew. Or if you're confident, and this is on either side of the straps, then I know it's straight because I can feel it. Or what you can do is if you're confident that you can get it on there straight without that, you can just simply put a clip right on top. So right over there. All right. So I'm going to do that for all of the other two straps 
uh, that I have in there. And then there are some gaps. You can see there are gaps here. So what I would, what I do is I go back and I put a clip right in the middle. So between the clips, I actually add another clip. And you add as many as you need to be confident that it's flat and straight. I give it a little tug um, every now and then just to make sure if I do like this, I can see that that top lining piece is straight as well. So you add as many clips as you need. And there will be a lot of clips, believe me. Um, usually there are quite a, quite a few clips. All right, so that makes me comfortable. Um, I'm okay with <clears throat> the way it's in there. And now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go and I'm gonna stitch around my top raw edges using a quarter of an inch seam allowance and a stitch length of three. I normally start, start at an edge or in the middle, it doesn't really matter, but I normally start at <clears throat> either an edge or in the middle and then I come around, but it's up to you uh, how you wanna do it. So it's a quarter of an inch seam allowance using a stitch length of three. So let's go to the sewing machine and sew that. So now we've sewn around the entire bag to close it up. But what we need to do is turn it right side out so that we can finish it off. So that's where the opening on the bottom comes. So what we're going to do is pull out our lining piece so it lays flat. Once we pull that out, we then need to get our exterior piece, which is this bottom piece, right side out. And that's where this hole comes in handy in our lining. So we're gonna stick our hand through the lining pocket and you should have left your zipper open. We're gonna grab a corner, so I'm gonna grab one of these corners or actually both, fold it in on itself and I'm going to pull it through my lining of my pocket on the inside, my divider pocket. So for those of you who've never made a bag or never heard the term, this is known as birthing the bag. So I'm actually pushing I'm rolling my bag and pushing and pulling on this side to get the bag out. So we're trying to get a big bag out through a smaller hole and that's why it's called birthing. So for any um, body who has birthed a child, you, you understand the concept or see one birth, because you don't have to birth it, you can see it being birthed. Um, you understand how challenging this can be at times. So. I'm just tugging, I'm rolling and tugging, and this will take a little bit of maneuvering. And you can push, once you get close, you can push the top piece down, and that should get it in. Be very careful, do not pull your straps, so do not pull, try to get it out through your straps. It's an easy way to dislodge your straps, and the last thing you wanna do is try to fix and get your strap back in there. Um, but I am pulling the body of the bag through and you can see it is coming through. It does take a little bit, but take your time. Look at that, you birthed your Melisi. Okay, so now I'm tugging down on that line on that interior zip pocket just to be able to straighten it out so I'm giving it a, a, a nice tug to straighten it out you can push down on your your corners as well so you can do that either from the inside of the bag from the corner of the bag but you want to poke out these corners that you created and you should be able to get your hand back through that lining piece to poke them out I'm poking them out and your bag is almost done not quite done it's almost done so now we have a couple of holes so what you should see is you should have when you straighten out your bag a little bit you should have 
your tag in the front, your wealth pocket in the back, and your zippered pocket in the middle. So we have a couple of things to do to finish this off. So the first thing we need to do is sew up the two holes that we have. So we have a hole in the bottom center and we have a hole over here. So we're going to tackle this pocket first. So we're going to sew this up. The way we're going to do that is we're going to pull the bottom seams through our welt pocket. Say that again. We're going to pull the bottom seams through our welt pocket. It was easier to turn this bag and it's easier to turn a larger bag through the lining in some way. If this wasn't here, you could do it through the lining and then seal it up by, um, you know, using this method. So I thought this was a method that, you know, if you haven't tried it, you can give it a try. So I'm going to stick my hand and turn this around, stick my hand in the welt pocket and I'm going to grab, you see my hand here, I'm going to go grab that bottom. And when I do that, it will be kind of challenging, but you can do it, I promise you. And you're going to grab these pieces of fabric. So I'm grabbing from a corner. So this is a corner piece, which makes it easier. And then I'm going to pull this and I'm going to pull. Remember, I only sewed part of the way. I'm going to pull to the other side. So if it's easier to grab the other corner as well while you're doing this, be uh, pull, but be gentle because you don't want to rip any seams. Okay, so now I'm getting most of it out, most of it out, and I have the pocket. Now, there should be four layers of material here, right? Because you have your pocket exterior piece and your pocket lining piece, which is the waterproof canvas. So I'm going to line up this piece, okay, this piece, which is my lining piece of my internal pocket, with the exterior pocket piece, with the other lining pieces. So we have a lot of things. It's, it's gonna be six pieces. I, I think I said four, but it will be six. And you can push it, push it up as high as you need it to get. You should be able to get in there, okay? And it will be six pieces. So I start once again from the middle. So I have my notches, right? I have my notches and I will match up all of my notches and it should be six pieces, remember, right? So we're going to have our lining, main lining, pocket exterior, and then we're going to have the pocket lining. So that's the first three. So we're going to line those up. And taking this step by step is the easiest way to do it, um, rather than trying to do it all at once. So we're going to take those and we're going to line them up. Remember, you're grabbing the centers. If you get the centers, then it's easy to sew out to the ends. So that's the first three and I'm going to put a clip. I'm then going to focus on the second three, which is once again, the main lining piece with my notch. I'm going to line that up with my pocket exterior piece. So I put the centers together there and then I'm going to match up my lining of my pocket as well. So I'm going to get that together. So now I have three pieces there. So now you see that you have all the centers together, right? So we have two clips in there, one for one half and one for the other. This is three pieces and that's three pieces. We're going to now take and straighten out as best you can your fabric. We're going to match these two center pieces together. So I'm going to take out my clip. I'm holding it firmly. I know that I have all the centers here and I'm going to clip them together. So it should be six pieces of fabric that I'm clipping. All right. Now, if I pull out to one corner, I should be able to grab an additional three on this side, three on the other side and clip them together. So you may, what I suggest you do is put the clips relatively close together and then you can always uh, space them out before you sew. But by clipping in the middle, it makes it easier. So I have six pieces here and I'm going to put a clip in that. So you can see I'm spacing them pretty close together because if one slips, at least the other one will hold it. And as you go along, just take your time doing this. Um, you will get it clipped. And remember to count your fabric pieces. So there should be six every time. So I'm gonna clip this side and then I'm gonna go back to the opposite side of my center line and clip that side.
Okay, so once you're done, you should have all of this clipped. It is a tight space and it is coming out that small hole, but you can do it. Take your time, start at the center, work out to the left, out to the right, and you'll get it all clipped. I'm gonna take this to the sewing machine and this is my quarter of an inch stitch line. I'm just gonna follow that and stitch all the way back to the other one and I'm gonna back stitch at the start and the stop. Use a stitch length of three on your sewing machine and close that bottom pocket. Okay, so we sewed that up. We sewed across the entire bottom, starting where I ended and finishing where I started or vice versa, but it's all sewed up. So what we can do is put push this pocket back in. So once again, just poke it back in there. And once you get it partially in there, you can stick your hand in your zipper and there should be no opening on the bottom. If you find that you didn't catch all the pieces, just go back. Um, you can usually rip back a little bit or maybe take a, a deeper stitch. But um, that's, you know, when you're doing it, be very careful that you catch all six pieces. So if you look inside my bag, it's totally sealed on the inside of my bag. Now what we're going to do is we no longer need this opening in our welt pocket because we use it to close the pocket lining. So what we're going to do is we're going to, I'm going to poke these corners in towards me. Then I don't have to poke them all the way in just enough so that I can neaten up that bottom. I'm going to fold under. So in other words, fold towards the lining piece of the bottom that's opening, that's open of the opening, I'm folding it under on one side, and then I'm gonna fold it under on the other side, about the same amount. So I normally do it a quarter of an inch because that's what my stitch seam allowance is anyway. Um, and so you just fold it under the same amount. So if it's three eighths of an inch, do three eighths of an inch. In this case, it's a quarter of an inch. Once I fold it both under, I'm going to match those folded edges. So I'm just gonna match these two together all the way along the bottom and I'm going to clip. So it's going to look like that. Now I'm going to stitch this close, this opening close at one eighth of an inch seam allowance. So I've sewed that using the one eighth inch seam allowance. So you can see that. And now all I need to do is poke that back into my weld pocket. Make sure you poke those corners back in towards the lining as well. And yes, I use contrasting thread. I use it so I can show you, but um, as far as the finished bag is, nobody really looks in there. I mean, I do if I buy a bag, but um, <laughs> I don't think anybody looks in there. So I'm just going to poke that in. And just trying to make sure I get those corners poked back into the bag. And I'm going to neaten that up. I'm going to push my lining down. And you can see that the inside of the bag is now complete. There's no opening here. This is shallow enough for a pair of glasses or a cell phone. There's a ample pocket here um, that you can see it actually pulls the bag in on the sides, which is what the intention is. And the last step that we need to do is top stitch around this entire bag. So I'm going to do two stitches worth of top stitching. You can use just one um, stitch around of top stitching. I'm going to do one at a quarter of an inch first, and then I'm going to do another row of top stitching at an eighth of an inch. 
if you want to, I would, you can do just one. So if you want to do just a quarter of an inch or just an eighth of an inch, it's up to you. I would recommend um, a quarter of an inch, but if you like an eighth of an inch and you think it's nicer, then that's fine. I clip my straps to make it straight. I'm rolling in this top lining piece to the wrong side or to the lining side because I want it to be as smooth as possible. And then I will clip the sides. I do start um, sewing at the sides because I think it's less visible. I drop my needle and I'll show you, um, I'll explain to you what I'm talking about. I start at the sides because I think it's less visible. And I also line up on the sides. When I drop my needle, I actually drop it right in the seam. So that's how I start. Um, some people find that it's too thick to do that. So if you find it too thick, you can start a little before or after. Um, it's totally up to you. So I'm just putting in as many clips as I need to keep this folded under. And once again, this does take quite a few bit of uh, quite a few clips. So if you think you can do it with five clips, um, that's okay. Whatever you feel that is comfortable for you, I use quite a bit because I don't like fiddling once I've started. When you start your top stitching, for a neat top stitching, just keep going. Even if you go off by a little, go slow and keep going. Even if you go off by a little, you can always get back on track. Um, and eventually over time, you'll, you'll get it. You know, you'll be able to do it. If this is not about speed. You know, it's about getting it done in, in the neatest way that you can. So going slow, there's no race. Just go slow and get it, you know, get it as neat as you can. Um, you can use your free arm for this. I don't have a free arm on my machine, so I will be turning the bag slightly inside out to get this done. All right. So once you have as many clips as you need in here, you can see I have quite a few clips. You're going to go back, and I'm going to start using, I find it's easier if I use a quarter of an inch first and then come back and do the eighth of an inch. Um, but you can do one row of stitching. I would recommend that, you know, maybe use a quarter of an inch, which is a wider stitch if you're doing this uh, top stitching for the first time and you can't, you know, get close enough or you keep slipping on it. Um, and then after you, if you're doing both, do a quarter of an inch and then do an eighth of an inch. So I'm going to do that on my sewing machine and when we come back, we'll be done. And just like that, your Melisi tote is done. So we've added the double row of top stitching. Like I said, if you can only do, if you only want to, you can do one if you'd like. Um, I did both. I started with the quarter of an inch, but it's complete. So let's just review what we did. So what we did is we sewed the exterior of the bag, including our optional uh, purse feet. We added the straps. Internally, we have that weld pocket, which I said was a light level of security because you can't stick your hand directly in there. We have this internal zipper pocket, which is attached to the bottom of the bag. So nothing's going to get under that pocket because it's attached. We've used waterproof canvas in this one, but you can use all cotton and it's a beautiful bag. And we've added, you know, a couple of uh, a little bit of stabilizer in it in order to help it hold its uh, firmness. You can see that the pocket inside pulls the sides in to give it a nice rounded or square shape. And all you need to do now is give it a, a good pressing. So give it a good pressing. Be easy on that waterproof canvas. Uh, even though you can iron it, it does have a wax backing. So if it's too hot, we don't want that to melt. But give it a nice pressing. Use a limp brush, which I did throughout this video, and you're done. So thank you so much for joining me on sewing the Melisi Tote. I hope that you've enjoyed sewing it as much as I have. 
please remember, be bold, sew the bag you love, and click on that subscribe and bell to get notified when the next video is available. Thank you very much and have a wonderful day.